Hi, my name is Matt Egan. I'm a Principal Technical Specialist here at Microsoft, and really happy to be talking to you today about automatic attack disruption in Microsoft Defender XDR. Today, we're gonna to go through a relatively quick agenda. Uh, we're gonna talk about the current threat landscape, what's changed, uh, what is automatic attack disruption? When, why did we build this thing, in other words? Uh, as well as what sort of new features have we added to automatic attack disruption since we did the initial release? But let me start off first um, by talking about what has changed in the attack space uh, around the world. In just the last few years, attacks have become very different from the way they were back in the 2010s. Previously, attackers would have more of a spray and pray type of an attack. They would generally hit you from one domain. They would hit you on your endpoints and then move laterally across the enterprise. What we're seeing today is a much more persistent, targeted attack methodology, wherein they will hit you from multiple domains. Maybe it's an identity-based attack. Maybe it's an endpoint-based attack. Maybe it is an email-based attack. And then once they're in the environment, they will be far more persistent, far more analytical, and far more deadly than they were previously. We've generally seen that attackers, once they get into the enterprise now, are much more guaranteed to have a catastrophic impact than they were in the past. Automatic attack disruption is designed to do just that, get into the attack as the attacker is executing it, rather than waiting to detect something after the fact. By being predictive, we can determine where the attacker is likely to go and cut them off at the pass. To help security teams deal with these modern, fast-moving attacks, we built automatic attack disruption. It is uh, automated response capability that stops the in-progress attacks by analyzing the attacker's intent and using predictions to determine what they're attempting to do. We do this as a very high confidence level of at least 99% before we take action such as to disable a user account, disable a workstation, or unauthorize an OAuth application. The system is designed to also correlate signals in XDR using AI to analyze the attacker's next move and head them off at the pass. Automated attack disruption has had a massive impact. So far, we've already disabled about 35,000 attacks per month. We take an average of about three minutes to detect and disrupt ransomware attacks. We've protected over 120,000 devices, as well as 165,000 user accounts. I'll give you just one example from one customer at Microsoft. This customer was attacked um, using about 10 different domains, uh, a number of different spread IPs. Uh, they had compromised number of user accounts. They were trying to, de to deploy ransomware on about 2,000 devices inside of this customer's environment. We were protecting their endpoints, but their servers were being protected by a third party. We were able to save 97% of the machines that had been attacked that were defended by Defender XDR. Unfortunately, the ones that were protected by the third party were lost. Those machines are now being rebuilt and replaced with Microsoft's security tooling. What's new in automatic attack disruption? We have some new self-learning ML models, as well as new protections that we put in for domain controllers to help protect high value assets. Let's take a look at how we actually disrupt an attack with Defender uh, automatic attack disruption. So we're gonna take a look at here is a identity-based attack. And this one starts off with a password spray that is occurring against Entra. So it's happening inside of the cloud. That then proceeds into a uh, unfamiliar sign-in property. So we see that the user actually was able to compromise or was able to be compromised and acquire a, uh, a, a logon. We then see that we're giving alerts about atypical travel, an anonymous IP address, malicious IP addresses, and then we're seeing that there is a Defender XDR alert because a compromised user account was identified through activity analysis. And then we see that there is a suspicious attempt to create an Azure subscription. Now, at this point, we're already an hour plus into this, um, and then it takes another 20, 30 minutes for the SOC team to actually respond to this and we're looking at about 89 minutes uh, total to remediate this attack. With automatic attack disruption, we're able to pull that timeline back significantly. When we see that Defender XDR identified this alert occurring, we were able to step in, disable that user account at minute 46 instead of at minute 89. Is it perfect yet? No, not quite. We are still making improvements. We are still making uh, enhancements to the system to be even faster in these sort of identity-based attacks. But you can see that we're still responding faster than the SOC team can uh, generally attack or respond today. 
Now, let's take a look at a more complicated scenario. This is a multi-stage ransomware attack. Now, this comes out in about three separate layers that we're gonna take a look at. One is where we see that there was a threat actor who had established a, uh, an access point to a domain controller. Now, this particular machine wasn't onboarded into Defender for endpoints, so they had already established access. And then we saw that there was a connection established from that machine into a SQL server, and then from there out to a uh, external server. When automatic attack disruption saw this activity occurring, we disrupted the attack by disabling that user account and cutting off uh, their remote uh, desktop uh, use or remote desktop activity. Then that attacker pivoted to a separate uh, IP address, a separate account, and tried to compromise that. We then started to do some, uh, we saw them tampering with AV, uh, we saw some AV tampering and some ransomware being deployed into the environment as well. And we went ahead and disrupted that attacker, disabling that user account, cutting off that network account as well. So the attacker then, as attackers do, pivoted. And at this point, they pivoted to another domain controller that had been uncontrolled and wasn't onboarded into the system. And they then compromised a Windows server. At this point, um, in, we had a false negative uh, incrimination that occurred for MDE. And we identified uh, that, the, to, that the user was actually considered to be malicious inside of the environment as well. And then we saw yet another pivot from this attacker uh, where they uh, con uh, connected to another machine and started to, again, run attacks against other servers and multiple devices. And this time they were using PSExec uh, to try and run those remote commands. We identified uh, the attacker as being malicious uh, and went ahead and started disrupting uh, on that user account as well when they tried to do some ransomware spread uh, across the enterprise as well. All in all, you can see how we were able to uh, identify attackers in many different modalities. Um, you need, they were either using remote desktop tools or they were using things like PS exec to try and spread uh, their attacks. Users getting compromised in, sent, uh, in situations like ent uh, Entra ID as well, but being able to take all of that holistic signal from all those different tools and step in and uh, disrupt that attacker before they could actually succeed. Uh, in their mission. So where can you go to learn more about uh, automatic attack disruption? We've got a number of links that you can follow leading into things like an infographic as well as pages on learn.microsoft.com. And you can also learn more about AI-driven security at Microsoft by scanning these barcodes. Uh, we have them covering a number of different uh, subjects. So definitely take a look at all of them. And of course, if you have any questions, reach out and ask your Microsoft team. Uh, we're always happy to help you with more. Thank you very much.